and this yellow Triumph. Okay, so as you heard from that snippet, I was getting a little bit of wind noise in this recording, so instead of torturing you with that, I'll just do a voiceover for this video for now. Um, today, we're lucky enough to be driving a Triumph TR6 supplied to us from the Classic Car Gallery in Southport. I always pop in there to see what interesting cars they have and of course I can never turn down any yellow car. So today we're in the Triumph and Triumph was a small motor car company uh, based out of the UK that were actually producing fun little sports cars since before World War II. However they were only a small company and they kind of changed hands a few times over the years and finally ended up in the hands of British Leyland. Uh, the British motoring giant. They pretty much destroyed every brand that it got its hands on. And of course Triumph was no exception. Uh, they closed their doors in the early 80s. Interestingly, BMW now owns the rights to the brand name and there has been some talk of resurrecting it. That would be interesting. Anyway, onto the car we're driving today. This is a pretty well restored 1970 model. Um, it's got the standard 2.5 litre straight six. Uh, in Europe it had fuel injection and produced about 140 horsepower here in the US. Uh, they had a little less horsepower, about 104 horsepower, uh, because they were offered with the carburetors, uh, which, well, producing less horsepower did offer a lot more reliability. Uh, the transmission is a four-speed. Uh, these were offered with overdrives, an interesting overdrive si system, um, but this one's just got the straight four. What I love about driving this car is that it's a bit of a nostalgia trip for me. I grew up in New Zealand, and in New Zealand we drove a lot of British cars. Uh, some of my first ever uh, driving experiences were in um, Leyland Group cars, um, so it's very familiar to me. All the, uh, all the switch gear and all the instruments, the Smith instruments, uh, all look very, very familiar because they were all in the cars that I learned to drive in um, before I was even old enough to have a driver's license. This particular TR6 has had a lot of love and care lavished on it over the years because it still drives like new. Not like, not that I'm old enough to have uh, driven one of these when it was new, but uh, I've driven a lot of cars from the 60s and 70s and they are pretty crappy these days, whereas this one's got tight steering pretty responsive brakes. I mean, the brakes are actually the weak point of this car. It does stop, but like a lot of cars from Britain, you put your foot on the brake, you put your foot on the brake, and nothing happens, and nothing happens, and then all of a sudden it grabs. Um, this is partially due to the fact that it's got drums in the rear. Otherwise, it's got plenty of performance for the car that it is, and even without power steering, the steering's fairly light in most situations. But really, what I love about the TR6 is its looks. Um, to me, you know, the wheel arches and the size of the wheels are oversized for the size of the car. And that gives it a very unique look, uh, almost a modern look to my eye. I've always adored the lines of the TR6 and it's only getting better with age. Uh, so right now these cars are still in the, in the, in the low 20s uh, for a decent one like this. And I think it's a car that's going to become more and more collectible as the years go on uh, because they're pretty solid mechanically. They're a lot of fun to drive and I just think they're beautiful. Anyway, let's head back to my place and we'll have a closer look around this little beauty. So here we are back home to have a look at some of the quirky little details that make these cars so much fun. And this particular TR6 is in fantastic condition. You know, whoever's owned this before has done the work to keep this, this car up. But th this has a lot of quirks that cars of this vintage and in particular British cars had. Uh, like down here, uh, this is a common 1960s, 1970s feature where the uh, the high beam or the, the bright lights are changed with your foot and there's all sorts of little weird gauges like you'd have a, have a look in here you'd see what, what do you think this button does you, by looking at it you think this is how you adjust the rake of the steering wheel but no it's the vents uh, showing air will come out in your feet and uh, up in the top when you pull it out uh, and this one here is the fan <laughs> can anyone guess what this little one is of course that's the heater and of course the choke and over here, not that you can see it very well, but yeah, this is the, uh, the washers as well, the wipers. And this car's even got hazard lights, believe it or not. But yeah, probably the most awkward thing about this car is actually getting it started. It, it, you wouldn't think so, but they have the key right here in the center under the steering column. This is the most awkward spot to get to. Like actually starting this car, I've got to crane my arm around and get in there. And get, come on. <laughs> yeah, so strange. But around the rest of the cabin, let's have a look. So the handles for the doors are actually moulded into the, into the plastic of the door. Uh, the little rear vision mirrors, which are almost useless. 
and these super soft seats are definitely something from the 1960s. But you know, it's got everything you need and it's a, it's a really fun car to drive. And this particular one, it's got enormous amounts of spare parts and documents and little toolkits. The previous owner of this car really loved it and looked after it. Let's have a look at the, um, let's have a look under the hood. It's actually a very long hood or bonnet uh, for a British car. And heavy. And here's the engine, a very well kept engine. No fancy computers in this, just carburetors and spark plugs. And look, a 12 volt battery. Very fancy for a British car. A lot of British cars at, of this vintage had uh, still had six volt batteries. Uh, and super luxurious, an electric pump for the, uh, for the washers. Yeah, so pretty little car. And I even like the color. This color is known as uh, jasmine yellow, I believe. So yes, pretty cool. Uh, we thank the Classic Car Gallery as always for letting us uh, take their cars for a spin. William and I uh, always enjoy calling in there and taking something new. And while this is not a common car here in the US, uh, it's kind of a fun car for me as I said because you know, any British car I can get my hands on I always enjoy driving. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>